Hey, what's up guys? I'm back in the garage. I just wanted to bring you this quick video because I had just experienced a nightmare situation trying to remove the timing gear from the crankshaft on my 1999 Miata. And I also had a hard time getting this guy off as well. I should have been recording this as I was experiencing this, but it was such a nightmare that I couldn't think of anything else besides just trying to get this thing off. But hopefully I can kind of walk you through what I did and help you out that way. Um, I used a puller tool to get this off. You know, if you find yourself in the situation where this thing will not come off, this this is an option to get it off. Um, just know that you will be replacing this afterwards. Um, I have my new one right here. This is my experience removing this thing and give you kind of a quick overview of how I did that, what not to do as well. The first thing was to remove the woodruff key. I made a separate video for the woodruff key removal. If you are interested in a very easy way of doing that, uh, the link will be right here in the corner. So now that that's out, Moving on to this. As you can see, this thing is chipped. The reason why it's chipped is because one of the suggested methods for getting this thing off is actually prying it, using a pry bar, getting behind it, using the, the oil pump as leverage to kind of push this thing out. And so if this thing did want to slide out, that might have been good enough. Now, if you go on the forums, they say, you know, definitely don't do this. Uh, don't pry against your oil pump. I halfway disagree with that because I think if this thing was going to come out nice and easy, then yeah, you go ahead and pry against your oil pump, but just not using a ton of pressure. You don't want to crack your oil pump, basically. If you can't simply just put this back there, pry it in a couple different areas and have it come off, just give up there. The reason why this thing is chipped right here is because I was sticking this pry bar down here and I was literally hammering at this thing. Literally hammering on the end of the pry bar to try to get this thing to budge loose. Not only did I chip the timing gear, but I also, if you can see here, I also chipped my oil pump. Now that's not good. You don't want to damage your oil pump like this. And, and I was definitely putting pressure on against this thing that I probably shouldn't have been doing. In this case, as far as damaging the area that's actually sealing the oil pump, I don't think that's going to affect it too much. I do have to be careful when I put the new seal in that I'm not scratching the seal with any of that area that I've chipped up. So I am not going to be replacing my oil pump at this time. And fingers crossed, I don't have any issues with that. But it's just not good. It's just know that this is what's behind your timing gear and you don't want to damage that like I did. So moving on from that, what are your options with getting this thing off? There's the prying method, which if you are going to pry at it, don't use too much pressure. If it doesn't want to come off, don't try to force it. Try not to damage this. Try not to damage your oil pump and go to the second method, which is heating this up with a torch. I didn't use this method because um, one, I didn't have a torch, and two, by the time I had the option, I had already chipped this thing. So I knew that this thing was a goner. If I could pull this thing out with a puller, that that would definitely get it off. But if you wanted to try the option with the torch, you can do that and hopefully reuse this. So moving on to how I pulled this, I had to pick up a wheel puller set from Harbor Freight. And I believe this was about 15 bucks. The first thing I had to do was make a couple holes in the, uh, in the timing gear. Pretty much goes without saying, when you start the hole, start somewhere in the middle of this area. As you bore the hole out bigger, you can start to get a little close to the, uh, the crankshaft. You can see here that I started in the middle. I was able to clear the uh, crankshaft and the teeth. So keep that in mind. These are the three drill bits I used initially. The reason why I cut them was because I needed a shorter length to fit my drill in this space right here. I have already removed the radiator, but I left the, uh, I believe this is the AC condenser in. They had to take my Dremel and cut them down to a, a size that I could actually fit them in that space. But I started with a small hole and then slowly built that up. As I got to this size, I went ahead and tried to tap it with this tap. The metal from the gear was so hard that it was just kind of eating away at this tap. So I went to make a bigger hole and then I tried to use this one. Same thing. These taps are not meant for hard metal. After I did a little bit of research, I went to pick up this combo they have at Home Depot. Yeah, this was actually the packaging. Eight millimeter, uh, 1.25 uh, drill bit. This is a uh, high carbon steel drill bit and um, tap set. I went ahead and again, you can see I cut this. Put the tape there to make sure it didn't go all the way through. But as you can see here, that's about as far in as I got less than halfway. When I was doing this by hand, it was, wasn't working very well. I really needed to get in there and get this thing started. And it was just spinning. Couldn't get enough pressure in there, especially at the angle that I was at. Um, having to kind of reach in sideways like this and push it out this way. So what I did there 
actually took the tab and I put it in my drill. I was able to get it started that way. Kind of had an issue with that because I was hard to get this uh, chuck tight enough. It would get in far enough to start the thread. As soon as it caught, the drill would just spin but it was enough to kind of get the thread started. And I was able to get a couple threads uh, tapped by hand. Actually, it looks like uh, about three or four threads I was able to tap into there. Then after that, I just made sure that I could get these bolts in. And then I used the uh, the puller tool, which is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Because this thing's already off, I can't exactly show you how to use the puller tool on here. I guess I could kind of explain it, but there's other videos showing how to use one of these. It's really easy. As soon as I got uh, those bolts in there, set this thing up, the thing just came right off. So yeah, that's basically my horror story. Leave a comment down below if you've used the torch technique. I really like to hear if that's something that, uh, that works well. Um, but yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.